Oh, this is my style. I love black and white. That's what I do with my speed. Yeah. This is beautiful. Wow. And so this is the eight. Yes. Slightly smaller, less weight. Yes. What is any of the trade off in terms of specs wise? So in going from the 10 inch to the eight, uh, I wanted to retain as much of the character of that speaker. Sure. Yeah. You know, if I come out with an eight inch, it doesn't sound anything like the 10 inch. People go, what? Mm -hmm. So I looked to retain as much of the parts that make the 10 inch driver as I could. Okay. So it's exactly the same motor structure. Okay. Exactly the same tweeter. The same cone, except I just trim off about half an inch off the radius okay. to reduce the size of the cone to shrink it to the size for an 8 inch driver. Okay. And then I obviously by shrinking down, trimming down the cone, I have to use a new surround okay. and change the chassis to be an 8 inch. Driver. But the flavor should but be just the about there, yeah. Yeah. And the measured performance is near identical. Really? So, and it turns out that using the same motor structure, the strength of that motor structure, combined with the smaller diameter cone, is still the correct ratio of area, mass, and BL for it to chew, for chew that right in this cabinet. Gotcha. And then I took every dimension and shrunk it to 80%. To that 8 over 10. Right. <laughs> And that includes all the uh, cabinet thickness, okay. from inch to three quarters, the front panel from two inch to one and a half. So in the um, mechanical drawings, you kind of look at it and you wouldn't immediately know whether you're looking at the eight, eight inch or, or the ten inch. And even from and visually. And photographs. Yes, it's hard to tell. The giveaway is the, the logo takes a bigger percentage okay. of the share of the area on this one compared to the ten. And if you look carefully, obviously, since it's the same tweeter, it it has more of a share of the surface than yeah. the tenage. But otherwise, it's very difficult to tell which is which yeah. without scale. Well, speaking of scale, you have now mastered the art of trickle down and scaling because literally you've got, there's obviously other companies that do models lower, but there's usually a much bigger scaling down and trade off in terms of part. You've basically got the identical speaker just in the scaled in every respect. Right. I mean, I obviously you, you have to give up something. So what is it that I give up? I give up some sensitivity, mm -hmm. sensitive 91, okay. 87. Okay. Um, even with the same driver, obviously because the cabinet volume is lower, you have to drop everything to match what low frequency response you can get out of a smaller box. And the box is about half the volume, you know, 0.8 okay. times 0.8 times 0.8. So porting would be a little bit different too. And the port tuning frequency is different. Uh, I did change the um, spider stiffness because since I'm tuning the port to a different frequency, I need to also change the free air resonance of the driver. Just awesome. technically from getting the alignment I want. So it drops from 91 to about 87 and a bit. Uh, the cutoff frequency comes up from 42 hertz to about 46, 47. Okay, 46. okay. And, but the impedance stays just as easy. So really, uh, okay. The, I think the minimum is about 6.8 ohms at 140. So still most amps will drive it. Very easy to drive and still s retains the character of the others. And as you say, when you do s lower cost models, mostly the configuration looks obviously different. Mm -hmm. This it isn't. But uh, one of the reasons for doing it is, it's strange. We wanted a big speaker. That was the brief, you know, to, because all these speakers like JBL, right. L100, coming out as the big yeah. old speakers yeah. like in the old days. So we do one. Then people walk in, because you don't get a sense of scale from a photograph. Mm -hmm. They walk in, oh, that's bigger than I thought. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say is... You know how big ten inches is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, a it's not so really taking up much. Can you can't get any smaller. Yeah, to get a ten inch. You're drive. right. Yeah. And you know, it's not. It's fairly deep, but not only super modestly deep. Modestly yeah. wider than the yeah. driver, yeah. and a bit of depth. So, with that reaction, it makes you think. Okay, so people say I love this, but I don't think I can accommodate it in the home. So if we do a mini me version, mm -hmm. you know, matched as closely as possible in all the technology and construction but make it an, 
a smaller size, then this becomes a con uh, uh, becomes uh, practical for people. So what you do is you removed the only objection to purchasing that. Oh, it might too big. Yeah. Okay, then. Buy there this you go one. with this. I say yeah. to people, I don't mind which one you buy, as long as you buy one of them. <laughs> 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 well, what is the price difference now? So the the ten with stands is four thousand a pair. Okay. This with stands is three thousand a pair. Really. Okay, so that's a pretty significant savings, yeah. Yeah. And now I smell that this could mean a subwoofer in the future. Um, I don't know. Okay. You know, I've always had ideas of the kinds of products I'd like to do, but whether it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know, subwoofers. Is sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. Yeah. Subwoofers is one of those things where you've got specialist subwoofer companies. And then you got the, let's say, primary speaker companies who may do subwoofers because why not have some of that business? Mm -hmm. And I think subwoofers is one of those categories where people are not tied to the brand, thinking I have to have that brand subwoofer to go with my main speaker. Sure. Uh, maybe I go to a specialist subwoofer. Mm -hmm. And so... There's one thing saying, oh, I think I could do a subwoofer. There's another thinking, is that a business model? Right. I don't know. Unless I do something remarkably Truly different. Innovative. That people go, oh, I've got to have that one. Now, of course. Uh, of course, I, I think that's that. in your head. I'm sure it is in your head. <laughs> so, you know, all these crazy ideas I've thought of in the past that never had an outlet for. Yes. I think I've got more of an outlet with MoFi than I have with that's some awesome. other companies. So, but I don't, it, it's just thoughts in my head right now. Okay. There's no um, plan as yet. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to share this. This is going to be very helpful. A lot of people enjoyed my series. And then Steve McCormick has been on my channel sharing as an actual owner what it's like. Maybe we'll get to see you next week while we're in L.A. So, yeah. again, thanks again, Andrew. My pleasure. Thank you.